I don't care how bad things get. I will never, ever get high again. I might have a little drink of wine, you know, to ease whatever, but that's as far as it goes. I will never get high again. What are the drugs that you don't like? Coke? Not that, Coke? At this point. Yeah. <laughs> Coke, heroin. I even smoke crack once or twice. Um, who are we? Who am I? <laughs> um, well, I like to say Perth Amboy made me. New York raised me, Washington Heights saved me, and now the Bronx, my home, loves me. My name is Jose Alexi. Most know me by Jose, but my family calls me Alexi. And I am a half Dominican, half Puerto Rican performer, storyteller, and overall creative. Uh, mostly self-taught thanks to the internet. <laughs> I've written plays, poems, and one-man shows. I've also made short films, questionable art, <laughs> and lots of mistakes along the way. But in the end, my work is deeply rooted in storytelling. I've always had a story to tell. And this is no different. It's just a little more personal. <laughs> because it's about me, my mother Josie, and our family. You know, and um, this, this project, I think, started... You know, it was, it was important for people to know your story and... Um, cause I also think that our relationship, you know, I, I, I felt a real change in you this last year. I felt, a, I felt a change in you for the better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just like, it's important for people to understand the addict and post addiction. Born addict, like to be real honest, is excuses. I had to go through my dirty clothes to wear clothes because my clothes weren't washed. You were gonna tell me to go wash my own clothes at that age? Uh, at what, 16? At 16, you yeah. How? At 16, I was, With what money? I mean, I mean this is my thing. Y'all hit me up for money all the time. But that's fine. There was no cash app. I had no bank account. How are you gonna bring me money from New York? Uh, I would physically bring it to you if I had to. I was in Jersey all the time. That's number one, pretty quick. At, at, at 15 grams, I got sick. What was that? 15 grams, I got sick, and I practically, from 15 on, I, I, I practically raised myself, in a way. Because grandma was in the house, in and out the hospital, and that's when, that's when shit kind of started hitting the fan. And I took care of myself pretty well. Like, I did what I had to do. It's not, I'm not trying to say, I'm not trying to say that all the responsibility lies on y'all, uh, but we each got to own up to our own shit. Like, again, if, if Isaiah is old enough to do X, Y, and Z, some grown man shit, then he can fucking wash his own clothes, number one. If I'm putting myself in his position, yeah, like, I have my beef with mom, you have your beef with mom, we all have our beef with mom, right? Like, if y'all didn't have food in the refrigerator, like, you know, the things like that that I know that you went through when you lived in Island Town with her, like, that's a big, that is a big deal. There's no food on the table. But, like, little things like clothes and all that, like, that, and especially because she's taking care of grandma or whatever, like, I don't know, like, I get what you're saying, trust me. I'm not trying to put the blame on anybody. This is not about blaming anyone. Like... I just think that maybe if you or anyone, like if, if they really knew mom's story, and this is why I want to almost want to do this, like if they really knew mom's story, like I feel like maybe they will look at things a little different. ¿Qué usted quiere eh, que el mundo sepa de su hija? De mi hija, que es tan bonita. <laughs> y que, que ustedes se llevan bien, todo eso, que eso es bueno, muy bonito, pero sí. no es decirle eso a la niña. ¿Y qué te, qué usted diría de, diría de mí? You're not in the middle. You're not in the middle. So you you're want, you're strong, you're feisty. You go, you're not in the you gotta move over this way. <laughs> you just called her that. <laughs> uh hold on. Uh, fix your jacket. No, like it's how were you sitting before? This is why I don't like taking breaks. Okay, that, that's what, yeah. Okay. When this process began, its focus was my mom and how she overcame her addiction to heroin. And we started talking about that because of the pandemic. Um, drug and alcohol abuse was on the rise and she felt like her story could really help someone, even if just one person, you know? And I agreed. But after we started filming, I quickly realized that this is so much more than just 
drama. That. <laughs> yeah. Um. So again, what do you know about mom's drug use? Uh, just that she used to, yeah, she used to do drugs. Uh, she went to prison a couple times, I think, and that she beat someone with a bat. Yeah, animals living upstairs. Would you? This is why I didn't want you here. Okay. Because now we're getting into it. No, it's it's hard to describe. I mean, because I just met her. Like socially, um, I didn't, right? socially, yeah. I didn't know like her life, you know, experience or anything like that. So I couldn't really say, you know, judge her on any aspect of who she was and what she was about. Well, that says a lot about you. A lot of people that don't know her and they judge her right away. I'll tell you what. In the place she's in right now, it makes me very happy because not everybody escapes with Josie's been through. Josie's been through a lot of stuff, you know. Some of it her doing, some of it maybe not her doing. I, I've i always felt very protective of her because I, I pretty much experienced most of the stuff that's happened to her. So, like, the thing is, I, I think that because of her drug use kind of maybe did something to her brain, like... You know, I don't know. Whatever. Theo, Theo said that she got hit by a car when she was younger. That could have done something because she was young. And by a bat. She got hit by a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> she got hit by a bat? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was, uh, we were living at night, uh, 185 Fiat Street. We were playing uh, baseball, and I can remember him by Tito. He went to swing at the bat, and I ran behind him, and he broke the uh, shit out of my nose. Like, I had to be taken to the hospital and everything was that bad. She got, eventually got hit by a car and had to be taken fast to the hospital. She had an operation near her, uh, the lower abdomen. I don't know, I don't remember if it's the left or the right side. All I know is that that accident, I believe, you know, this is something I've believed all my life. It's probably why I was always so protective of her is that something happened. I don't know if she, something got jarred during the accident, but Josie came back with a different like attitude, more aggressive. We didn't understand that at the time that it could lead to anything else, but you know, and, and we weren't doctors. And I was still a little kid myself, but I have very vivid memories of that. Yeah, yeah. not only that, I don't think, yeah. I don't know, I think she forgets a lot of things too because of all the drugs and everything or else. do you think that you purposely, like, just... Because I say it all the time, because you're a Rojo. Like, I purposely don't want to remember certain things. So I, I, I purposely don't recall. No, don't me, with me, was my drug use. Drug use. My childhood, well, my parents knew I was going to be a handful from the beginning. Like, my mom had to tie me down just to take a shower. And by the time she got out the shower, I was gone. Did she have to tie you down? Yeah, just to take a shower because I, I used to be all over the place. Like, I was out the door. The minute I could be, you know, the, the, the minute I started walking, if I could be out the door, I was out the door. You know, one time, she told me a story. One time, uh, I was laying in the crib and she thought that I was sleeping. So she runs in to take a shower and by the time she got out, I was in the corner of Market and Oak Street in my pampers with a pillow in my hand. We had a normal childhood where, you know, we were given what we can afford. We, by no means were we well, well off, but we had the necessities. We had food, we had a roof over our heads, we had clothes to put on. I didn't know her growing up. Really, um, I I was young. I didn't hang out. My parents were like super strict, so I didn't know her because the, of the life that they all lived. It was more partier. They were much older. It was just always us too, like you know, um, peanut butter and jelly, you know, Tom and Jerry, that kind of thing. And we were always together, no matter where we went. You know, if we were downtown running around, you know, 
on a Thursday when it was garbage night trying to go through the garbage and pick out you know little things that learners used to leave out just to have it you know because we weren't rich but we weren't poor per se but we just you know that kind of fun you know always at the pizzeria hanging out and y'all just it was like she said it was like innocent fun innocent right? fun yeah you know we I, we never even picked up a drink or anything it was just innocent you know clubbing that was our thing music uh, and probably the biggest influence in our life was when dad divorced mom. You know, dad has always been a womanizer as far as uh, he thinks he was a gigolo. And, and, you know, he did his thing. And, you know, but the person that suffered the most from all that was my mother. When my dad was cheating on my mom, and I used to see my mom cry and suffer, And um, at 11 or 12 years old, I made it my mission to find this lady. In those days, there used to be a cop in every corner. In front of the cops, I decided to wail on this lady with a baseball bat. And that was my first encounter with the law. Why are we so mad? Because she, she knew my dad was married and my mother was suffering because of it. So... It was something that I couldn't stand seeing at that age, especially at that age, and that was it. Like, that was the biggest pain I think I went through before I started my drug addiction. And then you rebelled? Yeah, and I was just fighting, you know, arguing with people for just stupid shit, you know? And then, 1984, they had put me in a, I remember this clear day. They had put me in a, like an anger management program in New Brunswick. It was called the Gin Shelter. And it was a intensive, you know, um, anger management thing. And then I met your father looking outside the window, right on Remsen Avenue, it was right on Remsen Avenue. And your father was walking past and that's how I met him. Um, yeah, I was um, at 13, I, um, you know, I was doing the, the typical marijuana use, you know, in school, hanging out with my friends and, um, you know, smoking weed. And um, that turned out to be um, like every day, you know, and before you know it, I started doing masculines and that was the thing that was out back then. So, uh... You were born two months after I got locked up. Damn. And the day you were born, a couple of days later, they took you to go visit me. And I saw you for the first time, but I couldn't touch you because we were behind a plexiglass. And y'all y'all hung out from like the age of 12 to yeah. till I, till I was till I got pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. And y'all lost, lost touch? It was just, I mean, we were still hanging around when you were born. Um, and then I would still go with her to New Brunswick and hang around with her, you know, and I was with Hart and that crew and, you know, Redmond Street. And I was with her but not in depth, like I did not know what was going on behind the scenes. Cause back then, like we didn't have no sense of um, awareness and direction, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we thought it was cool, yeah. you know? And, um, but yeah, I did, I introduced her to Coke. Yeah, she did. And, and, you know, later on, you know, we did Howard, but yeah. But I, again, I never knew what was going through, through the back end of whatever she was going through and whatever she was going through with heart. And then all of a sudden, you know, the partying and everything, I kept on doing it with other friends, but Josie, Josie just totally disappeared. Like there was no trace of her. Yeah, once I, I got introduced to heroin, I was, that was it. You know, I was stuck, I was stuck in that rut. And, you know, my running partner, which is my, you know, three of my good friends, but your mom's, you know what I'm saying? She was like my partner, you know? Like every day we was together and... Both my mom and my dad were in and out of my life when I was growing up. My dad was mostly out. My mom was somewhat in, but even when she was in, it wasn't 100%. She, she wasn't 100%. So, of course, I was raised by my grandmother and I'm fortunate to have had her because she is a huge reason I am the man that I am today. You know, by just be by the way she raised me and the things that she instilled in me as a kid, I'm fortunate because she taught me and she raised me in a way that has 
benefited me as an adult. You know, everything, like I said, everything in the beginning was cool. Everything was fun and it was, everything was all right. And, you know, we tried to sell it to keep our habits going, not to get rich or, you know, to buy the fancy cars and all this other stuff. It was just to maintain our habits. And, and at times we were, um, we succeeded at that. And at times we didn't, you know, and it was many times that um, I went to jail, left her alone. And so she had to fend for herself. And at the same time, taking care of you, me, so it, it was tough. I went buck wild. I was already into my dope habit. I was robbing every Tom, Dick, and Harry, family and all. And I did my, I did my thing. It was so bad that I was doing so much heroin that I set myself on fire. Thank God I woke up and enough time to pat the sleeve of my jacket up. But um, I set myself on fire. When did you say this? Oof, 89? How did you say? 89-90. Because in 91, I was raided by Pretty Amboy Police. I was set up by my BFF. She set me up something decent, let me tell you. And you confirmed, it was confirmed that she set you up? Yeah. They told me at downtown. Told her. Told me. As soon as I got downtown, they locked me and my little brother up. You don't remember that. The raid that my mom speaks of was, for me, the first time that I realized how chaotic things were with her and my uncles and you know everybody messing up and doing crazy things. And I remember specifically, not necessarily the raid, but after the raid, my mom's friend, the one who ratted her out, asking me if I wanted to go stay with her if my mom went away. And I can remember thinking like, what are you talking about, you know? But I guess it's because there was no one around to take me. My, my grandmother was on vacation. So it's one of those things where I know this lady kind of gave my mom up, but at the same time, she took me in. And, ha and had she not taken me in at that time, I could have been put in the system. And you know, God knows where that would have led to. Mind you, I had just finished coming from New York. Your father was locked up. I was on the phone with your father. And I swear to God, I did not hear the cops coming. They broke the door down. Where were you living? 338 Maple Street. My mother was in Nicaragua on vacation with her sister and her sister's husband. The cops came in. I had drugs galore, money galore. I was high as hell, talking to your father on the phone, who was in Annandale. You know, life wasn't bad. It wasn't good, but it wasn't bad. So I just kept on. I just kept, you know, getting high, getting high. But I always knew that it was a bad thing. Like, I knew that, you know, either I was going to keep going to prison or I'm going to end up dying, you know? Got downtown. I wrote an affidavit that everything that was found in the house was mine. So I took the weight. They let my little brother go. And my mother was away and I was stressing because I had a monster habit and I wanted to get out. So I called my aunt and she posted my bail. And two weeks after that, I got locked up right over again. That was, it was back to back every single time. We are a pretty big family. Uh, my grandmother is one of 12. She's one of the oldest, but growing up every time, like my mom would get locked up or, you know, she would rob another family member. She was out doing her craziness. Our family really wouldn't talk about it. You know, they definitely didn't talk about it in front of my grandmother. I think out of respect. And I know this cause I was, I followed my grandmother everywhere, everywhere she was, I was, and we, and nobody ever said anything. And you did three bids? I did. Yeah, three bids. The first one was a three flat. The second one was a three with a one stip. But I got off on home confinement, which means, which meant that I was doing my time at home after a few months that I did in. That's when you had the bracelet? Exactly. Um, <laughs> oof. 
But no, not nothing. I never really saw her do anything yeah. in front of me. Yeah. That's one thing I could vouch for. Yeah. And she lived downstairs. But she didn't... She never, like, showed me, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. She never talked yeah. about it. She never... I knew she was doing her thing because I, I was young, but I saw the movement. While people have an idea of what my mom has done in the past and all the dirt that she's done, I've seen it firsthand. And I don't think a lot of people realize that, that in between her bids, you know, I would go with her to New York to cop the drugs that she would ultimately sell and use. I've seen her beat people up. I've seen her do crack once. I've seen her, you know, rob people. Like, I, I've seen a lot. And I think that's why I stay away from that life because I saw it firsthand at such a young age. Heroin consumes you. Mentally, physically, emotionally, it consumes you. What do you, what, like, what, how do you describe being high on heroin? Like, oh my God, that? like it was me say, against the motherfucking world. But it, what do you mean by that? Nothing. Nothing mattered. Why? Because you were mellowed and... In Isaiah, your, I can hear that. In your own little world, like, ah. Oh. You know, I, I, you're in heaven. You're in fucking heaven. Fuck everything else, doesn't matter, including my kids. I never really felt like loved by her, you know? Um, and I just wanted to be loved by her. And I remember um, I had, she was in the county jail and I had just learned how to write in cursive and my mom has beautiful handwriting so I brought my little sheet with me and I was like, look, Ma, you know, I learned handwriting and she like, she was like, I don't give a fuck or something like that. She was stressed out. You know, she totally disregarded and like cursed at me and all that stuff. And, you know, I was really, really devastated just because it's like, I, why don't like, like, I know this is super cliche, but it's like, like, why don't you love me? You know what I'm saying? When I think of the family members that, you know, that have always kind of been there for us, uh, the first people that come to mind are you, your sisters, yeah. your, whole, your whole side of the family. Like, you know, when I was on Mitri, y'all taught me how to dance bachata. That's just, never, we're never going to live that down. Like, I know. Gone. So. Why is it in Mitri? I can stop if you want. What's the matter? My mother and your grandma. They were just so tight. That's why we were always together. And my grandmother, was. she suffered so much. Suffered so much. And she suffered because of my mom, you know? She suffered. And, and it's like, I know that, in, I know that that wasn't intentional. Like, nobody is out to intentionally hurt your mom or your loved ones. But because of, in my mom's case, because of the drugs and all that shit, um... She just was doing her thing and didn't care at the time or whatever who she hurt in the process. And that was because of the drugs. Ninety-three, I did the six months at administrative segregation, which is which is another term for being locked down. Um, had in house visits with my brother, you know, because we were in the same prison. Well, my grandmother did her best to keep everything as normal as possible. Even though I knew that this behavior wasn't normal and this kind of dysfunction wasn't normal, but we've always had what we needed. We, we never were rich, we never were super poor, but she luckily she gave me a decent life growing up. And that's, I needed that and I know that I'm fortunate because of it, you know? So when Anthony was born, like, did you know that he was born addicted to drugs? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Because he hadn't, he didn't come home right away. Mm -hmm. And then he had that episode where my the, baby, the monitor stopped, and we thought he was gonna die. When my brother was born, I was an only child. I was ten. And I was really happy, you know, I finally had a brother to share my life with, you know, to bond with. But the fantasy, the picture perfect, you know, relationship that I had in my mind uh, 
was super short-lived because you know he was born three months premature spent three months in the hospital even before he was able to come home we all had to get trained in cpr so imagine i was 10 years old trained in cpr because he was coming home with a sleep apnea machine and sure enough you know after he came home after three months the machine went off and we all thought he was gonna die so he spent another month in the hospital and uh, in that f during that fourth month when he was in the hospital we all knew that my mom was gonna get locked up again for ultimately what ended up being her last time but What do you remember about, like, Papa's death? Like, because for me, that was so long ago. But then talking to my mom about the whole experience, it really wasn't that long ago. No. I feel like I remember my mom's funeral. I was, how old was I? Mm -hmm. I was working in HMS Holes. So I probably was, like, 17. 17. I was working, and they told me my grandfather died, and I, I ran home. Yeah, because my mom said that that was it, like that was her, her wake up call. My grandfather passed while I was in prison and I did so much damage to him. I robbed him while he was sleeping in the bed at two o'clock in the morning. So I went to prison and he fell ill, had cancer, and I couldn't say I'm sorry. And the day he passed that I got the phone call, that very same day at 5.30 in the morning, as I was having breakfast, I looked outside and it was raining. Mind you, I hadn't even gotten the, the news that he passed away yet. And that morning I looked outside and I said, hmm, my, my grandfather passed away today he just he passed and sure enough by nine o'clock I had three sergeants two lieutenants and a whole bunch of other correctional officers to come give me the news that was that was the worst experience because I never got to apologize prior to that I had asked them to give me a bedside visit um and they said no they denied me because I had, I did not have my grandfather on my emergency contacts in the prison. So then I asked uh, for a visit to the wake, which I also got denied. I started writing a letter and I sent it to my mom. And I said, mommy, um, you know, please read this letter to papa. I need him to know how I feel. And, ooh. So my mother got the letter. And my mother got the letter. And she read it to my grandfather. My grandfather had throat cancer. So he couldn't talk. And he was, you know, always in a state because they had him sedated. But according to my mom, when she finished reading that letter to to my grandfather, and my grandfather opened his eyes and he tried to say something. And he tried to say something. Like his whole face lit up. And I know he forgave me then. I know he did. And I believe with everything in me that my grandfather is my guardian angel because I should have been dead a long time ago. So a few days after he passed, um, I made a promise. I made a promise that I would never get high on heroin again. January 7th, 2021, it will be 24 years that I've been clean of heroin. For real? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like, we don't talk about nothing. We never had a conversation about things like that. Okay. 
So, still never talk to her again. Come on. Yeah, I did. Come on. I'm filming, so I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if you want to be on camera like that. <laughs> Come on, stand behind that. Like, a go, both of y'all stand over there. Because I asked that, I was like, you think that relationship is better? And he said, yeah, right. Yeah, but it yeah, is better. A little bit, kind of. And I can't, yeah, it, it's a little better than it's been, yeah. Because he I, said he didn't know that he was born to do the drugs. That, yeah, no. I told you that plenty of times. Not from what I recall, but... Like, so see, I, I don't know when I really got my surgery. Did I get it after I came home? Did I get it before? Like, you, get, you, you got, got it after. afterwards. All right. Because it, you it, you never talked about none of that. Like, I think I need to, yeah, I need to really, like... I mean, like, she's mentioned it probably when I was really young. Like, he's a little bit older and he doesn't remember, but I remember having conversations. All right, and then, yeah, the whole, you just don't want me to grow up like you. Yes, I understood that. It just the way that... You were you went about everything wasn't the way it wasn't it. and I did it wrong. And I agree because that's the same thing with me. And I like, and I did it wrong. But at the time yeah, and he I didn't know, have he knows the, that. He knows the capacity that. to, to but handle now it we're different. now we're in this time. We're we're all in a better place when it, it for the most part. So don't not talk about it. Now exactly. make, I don't know if this needed to happen, but like I really do hope that y'all can sit down and talk. And I know? believe that everything, I like I live by these words, everything in life happens for a reason. Yeah, so then, but if, so this is the thing, we, we you both acknowledge that, that like some, some, some healing has to happen or, or a conversation at least has to happen. Make it happen. It, it, and it sounds like it, it, it may need to be with a professional. Like, it that's has just to what, be with a professional. So then make that shit happen, he's your son. Like, He's your son, and he, she's your mom. Like, you don't want to wake up tomorrow and something happens to one of you guys, and you regret that shit. And that's my fear. And that's my fear. But you so know, that needs to fix it. okay, we and I want to, but he has to be ready for that. Like, y'all yeah, both have to be ready. For that. I'm ready. <laughs> I try to be an open book, you know what I'm saying? And I know that not everyone is like that, including my brother Anthony and Isaiah for the most part, but Anthony, because he's still trying to figure out um, and sort out his issues with my mom. So when he agreed to speak to me on camera again, I was really grateful. And I am really, really grateful that he participated in this process as much as he could. Okay. Yeah. And how was your experience, in, like, how was it in Camden? Uh, it was good, I mean, we had, uh our own, we had like a whole house, yeah. I had my own room, uh, it was pretty good. We had Anthony for a few years because my mom was doing her last bid and when she came home, she, a few months before she came home, she was already saying that she was leaving, that she was moving and the first thing that I thought about was I hope she doesn't take Anthony and sure enough she did. And for me, looking back, that was the first time, that's when like the anger and resentment towards her, I think began because I felt like she snatched Anthony away from me. You know, something that I, that was so, such a game changer for me, it was a life changer to have a brother. And then she's gonna come and snatch him away. And I remember having conversations with her while she was in Camden and I was, you know, in Amboy with my grandmother and her trying to explain to me, but I just, I didn't understand because I just felt that it was super unfair, you know? got released and came to Pure Damn Boy and and I left because if I would have stood in Pure Damn Boy, trust me, I would be getting high again today. That's when my grandmother started getting sick. And... I, I don't... I told my mom the story. This is when you had already come home, though. She was still working at the hospital, right? Because when yeah, you came, she was... yeah. And um, this was for me the first time that I started really realizing that she was kind of getting older or sick or whatever. She had a. Uh... She um, she had gone to work 
it was early in the morning or whatever, and she got to work with um, two colors, like a black shoe. She was losing her eyesight. She went in with like a blue shoe and a black shoe because her vision started kind of going. And she was still working and they sent her home and she came home, she was like, oh, she's like, I'm so tired, you know. I, I just, I put on two different shoes and I was just like, I remember getting mad at her. Cause I was like, how could you wear two different shoes? That's so embarrassing, blah, blah. But it was because, you know, she had had like a little stroke and it started messing with her vision and it was just a slow decline from there. So it was a choice between me doing, me doing what I had to do so I could do for my kids or be fucked up all over again. And so I, I, I made the decision to leave to Camden because it was something new, something that I, I didn't know nothing about. So I thought it was a big help. And it was the worst place when I, I know, tell I you. Saying, like, Camden, and New Jersey was like Camden, the worst Camden, New Jersey, the yeah, state. it's the worst. But I think that speaks to your resilience to like how strong you felt about never going back. It's like you could be in the thick of it and you were like, I'm good. Let me tell you, I was tested in Camden. You know, a lot of people don't know. Or maybe I think I told you where I found dope on the floor. When I saw it, I was like, I, like I wanted to throw up. I wanted to throw just looking at it. And at one point, I picked it up. Uh, and I said, no matter what I go through in life, I will never get high again. And I took the dope in my fingers. I flushed the toilet and I threw it in the toilet, that was, that was proving to myself that I had it in me to stop, because it's presenting itself to me. You know, like, they say the devil's around. Trust me, he is, and I know that for a fact. 20 years, gone, blank, until I was in a line on New Brunswick Avenue in uh, Dunkin' Donuts. That was when your cousin Miguelito passed away. And then you didn't know that he was, I didn't know he was getting high because, to? yeah, but you know, I wasn't here to see what was going on. Like I would, I would catch it if I were here. And, um, and you know, everybody tried to keep everything hush, hush. Nobody ever told me. And then when I came down here that I got the phone call that Miguel passed away. That's when I found out of everything that was going on. He bought that mansion down at the waterfront and that that destroyed him because ripping every penny out of him to fix. That's what killed him. And he was just getting high, getting high, getting high to the point where Cole- Can you confirm this one? When Adelso told me. The thing with my cousin Miguel's passing is that it, I think about it and it's ironic in a way because the family, I'm sure, didn't expect my mom to survive her addiction and all her craziness, right? And here we were mourning the loss of someone who we least, least expected to go out like that, you know? And everyone took it really hard. I took it hard because he was a big part of my childhood. And it was, it was devastating, you know? It was really crazy. Crazy for the whole family. That whole time, from like 2001 to 2005, it's like a blur because you know, I, a lot of things were happening, not necessarily good things. And 9-11 had just happened and he died shortly after. And then I got kicked out of school, you know, the end of my sophomore year in 2002. It was just, it was a lot. It, that whole time was a lot. It was, it was bittersweet. It was painful because I could hear pain in her. So then we just started to talk and you know, she filled me in with everything. And till this day, I tell her, and, and she knows it's true. I, I don't say it just to, you know, say something in the camera to make me look good, but I always cry because I feel that 
if I would have been by her, I don't think she would have been in that predicament of, of being into drugs or being, um, I don't even know if the word is lowered because this is my sole opinion. There's diseases like cancer and, and all kinds of things. To me, drug is, is a choice. I, it's not a disease. It's not a disease and I don't care what anybody, a teacher that has never been through it can never explain that. You understand? Like you really have to go through the emotions of that addiction to really know what you're talking about. No textbook is gonna tell you because the person that wrote it never went through it. So how the hell would he know? What do you think you've lost because of your drug addiction? Like Nothing. What, you don't think you've lost anything? No. Of your drug no, 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 no. Wait, let me refer. I lost. Because I'm, I'm like, what wait, the fuck are we doing here? Wait, 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 wait. I lost. Don't give me no cookie cutter answer. No. What have you lost? I, I'm going to tell you exactly what I lost. My kids. No, because we're still here. No. Her and Anthony came to, to live with us in 2002. It was me and my grandmother and... Anthony and my mom, and it, it, at first it was cool, you know. Finally, like, I got my mom for the first time ever full time, but I slowly realized that it wasn't what I, what I expected, because we were like brother and sister. We would, I found the fake ID and we would go party every weekend, but then after a while I realized, like, I don't want a sister, mom. I just wanted her to be my mom and I wanted her to make up for 16 years of not really being there, you know what I'm saying? And Isaiah was born in 2004. He also spent a bunch of time in the hospital before he came home. And, you know, I thought like maybe Isaiah would change my mom, but it did, but it didn't, you know? And then I saw her on Stay Street in that little trailer and restaurant. Andy. And I heard her again, and I was like, holy shit. And she was crossing the street, and she was working at um, where I got my uh, jacket. Um, you were working at some dental or some doctor's office. And lab. she was telling me how, you know, your grandmother was blind and all of that. And that's when we kicked it off, and we started our episode again, where, you know, when Facebook, I found Josie. <laughs> You didn't have a job or anything, but then you found a job and like slowly you started getting your shit back together. Back together. And... My grandpa, uh, grandpa got sick. He started getting sick. That's when he started yeah, getting sick. Yeah, we were hanging out with him too. And I'm not sure if you remember, but that was my first trip to Dominican Republic with you. I remember. You remember? Is that when you cracked the bottle over my head? No. No, that was way after that. <laughs> <laughs> no. When did you move to New York? That's when, like, things started, like, our, our relationship kind of really, like, were, was tested. And I am a lot like my mother. Like, I go from zero to 60 really fast. I get that from her. I am my mother's son, you know. Um, and that eventually led to the big fight. So, you know, shit like that. Like, I'm trying to, things that we went through or I went through that nobody knows of, you know. I didn't even know that. I never even knew that. And you know, when you and I got into the fight that I moved to, to New York, um, on the car ride there, um, I started mourning her death. Why? <laughs> I knew that I, I knew there was no going back. And I, I knew that I had to start then so that when the time comes, <laughs> Okay. Oh, I just want you to know. Oh my God. Yeah. I never knew that. I never ever knew that. Yes. Hey, my hang up. And I can't even like, mom. I know. Why, that's, you know that's because. That's the fucked up thing about it. Yeah. Not really, you know. But for her, it's it's, it's probably a saving grace. She doesn't have to relive all that pain. But, but I, I am shaking. Yeah. There's 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 some. 
point in my, in my life that changed me. Everything happens for a reason or whatever, but... One night, we went out. I had just bought like this little $300 car. And we went out and time, you know, it was like last call. And it was time for us to go. And she was like, no, you go ahead. I'm going to go. I'm going to leave with this guy. I was like, no, you're not. Because I've always felt like I had to take care of her. Like, I always felt like I had to be the parent. And I was like, no, you're not. And I don't know. I ended up leaving and I waited for her. When she came home, I blew the fuck up on her and it was ugly. Like, we, we got into a physical fight. In, two, in April of 2005. And I packed up whatever I could, got in my car that had no gas, I had no money, and I just drove to New York. Uno no sabe el daño que uno hace. Uno no sabe el daño que uno hace hasta que, hasta que, and I didn't even, I didn't see it. At the time, I couldn't even feel it. Even if you would have told me then. I was really angry when we lived at, um, in Lawton Place. I was really angry. And when I tell my mom that certain things have changed me, um, having to move to New York under the circumstances that I did, that was one of them. But that was not a good time. You know, for the year that followed, I want to say it was bad. You know, like luckily I didn't have no job. I didn't have no money. I didn't have anything. Luckily, my partner at the time you know, worked at a restaurant, so we always had food, and, you know, he did what he could, and then eventually I found a part-time job. But that year, after I moved to New York, it was really, really rough. But I refused to go. Like, once I left, I was not going back. I was not going back. You damaged. Yeah. Yeah. That That's it. I damaged my kids. For the... For you, I had you, and I, three months later, I was running the streets. I left it to my mom because I was 17 years old. I didn't know how to raise kids, and I wanted to chase, you know, after your dad and do what he did, because I was so in love with him, you know? I wanted to be just like him, you know? With Anthony, I was already deep in. I couldn't get out. I couldn't get out. And with Isaiah, I've been clean. Like, I know that Isaiah didn't really ever experience her anything addiction related or drug related, but I feel like, you know, the gambling, you know, her numbers or her money thing, that was also, that's addiction. addiction. So like you go from one addiction to the next, but yeah. one, one thing from the outside saying, oh, she's bad with money, but it's something else from the inside, Sorry. you know, because you were working and you had money. But. Yeah, but um, it, it wasn't, I, I don't call it a habit because it wasn't like that. Like if I had a dream or if a number stuck and to me. And there were times that you won a lot, yeah. Yeah, there were times where I was hitting big. It goes back to her not knowing any better again. Simple as that, like she was born and is not her fault because grandpa didn't know any better because what I just found out was actually pretty crazy. So like, wow. that he, his father used to lock him in the basement for hours. Grandpa? Yeah. So, okay, like that makes sense. It just makes sense. And he didn't know any better. So yeah. he was the way that he was yeah. because he didn't know any yeah. better. I like, mean, yeah, people change, but was there anybody there to to really care to change. Yeah. I think people, especially on grandpa's side, forget, they forget. They forget that he had three kids. Yeah. And a, an a ex-wife that he, I, he, he abandoned practically. He abandoned her. Yeah. yeah. And my, my father's death, my dad's death, I, I, when I tell you, that broke me in more ways than one. Why, do you, why does it break you so much? Because after all these years, you know, my father living with another woman, creating three more kids at, at the time when they came from DR or whatever, I couldn't accept. I learned to live with it. I learned to accept, and I accepted them. Um, but my dad depended on me 
to like do his paperwork or or you know just he's he looked for me like he never did you understand like he depended on, on me and I felt like he was trying to to make amends so and I you know and I accepted it you appreciate that yes do you, do you, do you think his other kid do you think they were there for him or no honestly Joshua Joshua Joshua, that's it. My dad loved Joshua. Let me tell you, my dad loved the shit out of Joshua. Sometimes I was jealous. Sometimes I was jealous. But let me tell you, even in my addiction, I remember Brighton Avenue. They used to live right next door to my aunt. And me then. And I used to go there. And I'd be like, Dad, can I get $20? He knew what it was for. He knew I had a problem. And he never denied and he never denied me. And I think that the guilt of him not being there earlier in our, you know, in our lives, that he chose to to do for me, even though he knew it was wrong, I think, I believe with all my heart that he was doing it to make amends. And I give God thanks every day for him, even though he might not have been around for a lot of our youth, he came through when I needed it most for me, which was when I got, I grew up in the United States, when I got sent here, not by my choice, <laughs> but not because I did anything right either. So, uh, you know, he was there. He was there to give me a roof over, you know, over my head and to put a little project so I could work. On his deathbed, I took care of him. Well, oh. On his deathbed, I took care of him. He made me his power of attorney. And that Saturday, was it? I know it was Christmas Eve. I became his power of attorney. And he was due to go to dialysis. It was a, it was a Saturday. And the nurse asked me that there was a chance that he could stay, you know, die through dialysis. And I spoke to my brothers, Juan and Jose. And I, I believe Joshua, Catherine, and Ramona were there too. And I asked them all. I'm gonna put him in hospice because I don't want him to die without his family surrounding. Um, so I I signed the papers and I told him to please keep him comfortable. That I didn't want him to go through no ooh, to go to go through no pain. I signed the papers and that night, well, you were there when we got the phone call that I jumped from a second floor landing and landed on the first floor with only one leap. And I was angry that I wasn't there because I was with him 24 seven. And your words to me were, mom, he don't want you to see that. And I will never forget it. And I was angry that I wasn't there with him. Let me tell you. And you said, Mom, don't, don't cry. Because he didn't want you to see that. That's why that happened. And I believe that. To this day, I will never forget those words. He didn't want you to see him die. I didn't realize the impact that my grandfather had on all of us but especially my mom and my grandmother. Um, my grandmother was a virgin when she married him and loved him till the day he died. With all due respect to everyone else involved, but it's true. She was by his side for the most part till the day he died, and so was my mom. So yeah, what's, what, what's done is done, but um, actions definitely speak louder than words. Uh, when we first started dating, did I mention anything about, like, my family or the relationship with my family? No, not at all. That will happen, like, a month later for the Christmas party, right? 
Yes. Yep. Yeah, we were heading out to Jersey to a, a holiday gathering that your family had. And that's when you started mentioning about your mom, the relationship, because I was meeting her that day for gotcha. the first time. And then I had I had also told you that like that's the time that I started getting closer to like Carmen and Millie and all of them. Yes, yes. Gotcha. The sisters, right? And yes. cousin Carmen. And yes. my cousin Carmen, yes. When I first started getting really close with her was because the boys were playing baseball together. So we were at every baseball game. I don't know what happened. Like even that fell off about her. Like she stopped coming to games. Um after every she was in Allentown or she was here? No, she was here. She was in the middle of everything. Um and Isaiah, I mean Isaiah would spend weeks here. I not that I ever you think, cared. You think you know, no. Yeah, before she bought the house in Allentown. Okay, okay, you gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. She stopped gotcha. going to games and I I mean I even questioned like I even discussed it with Mills like hope she's not back on drugs or whatever because I was concerned like I she would be at every single game. So she, you never really were phased by her like big ass mouth? Yes, yeah, Catalpa. Catalpa. Catalpa is when I really remember everything. Like that, like it was to the point where I wanted, like, I, like as a twelve year old or like thirteen year old, I wanted to move out. I was thinking about moving out. And because why? Because I just it was <laughs> unnecessary, like how much she yelled at me, and how much like she didn't let me do. Like I, I know I was a why she yelled at Hold on. Little stuff. Can you tell him to shut the fuck up? I'm still interviewing. Yo! I'm telling you. And so she, she was like, oh, I had a drink or whatever. Like, does she drink like that? Now. She never really did, like, the whole time, but just, she started buying these, like, Yo, drinks. I, can you lower the TV and I can hear you? I'm trying to interview Isaiah. Maldita sea la madre, puñeta! Yeah, that, I should have warned you about that one. I started, like, realizing, like, all these other parents that are good to their, like, kids, and I'm just, like, looking at her, like... Yeah, so I started, I started feeling a little bit more resentful towards her, and that's it, like, it was just... And why did you move to, why did you move to Cindy's? Uh, I just couldn't deal with it. It was just a whole bunch of bullshit, like... She would come home, and as soon as she would come home, I, like, I'm mad. Like, I don't want to talk to her. Don't talk to me. Like, and then it was just, and it, it got to that point because she made it get to that point. Like, every day she would come in and argue. And Anthony lived with Cindy when? When we lived in Catalpa. Because Cindy didn't want to live in Catalpa. When he left, yeah. Why he left? They got into an argument. Because I got into an argument with him. It was something, and then, like, Something happened. All I remember about that argument is that something happened with the PS4, and like she was like, "Oh, oh it's yeah, Isaiah," asking, blah blah blah, yeah. and then and then he threw it out the window because he was so angry. Yeah. yeah. And how long did he live with Cindy for? A couple months, and he came back home. And how were things then? They were, I mean, you know, it was all right. You know. Did you was... did you or like were any of those moments wake up calls for you or like? Any, like, moments where you thought, damn, something's got to change? Any of those moments? Him moving out, him being so angry, whatever. Any of those moments were like, I need to change, or something At the needs time, to change? no. At the time, no. Why? Because, you know, sometimes you got to give tough love for somebody to realize where I'm coming from because they don't un really understand my life in the past. So... So they didn't see, they weren't getting it. He wasn't getting it. Because he was a, he was a still, how old was he at that time? 20, mm. 20, 20, 20 years old. And I, when I, and ironically, I moved to New York when I was 19 or 20. I think 20. 20. Yeah. We moved out, so we moved out. So that's the thing at that age, you're still, you're an adult legally, but you still, you're still dealing with, you know, a lot of interpersonal issues and you know things that he feels towards you and so for him to be treated i don't know in my opinion this is this is the time that i wanted to talk about like i remember saying but he's your son like he's your son you know and i, I just guess i guess you weren't having it for whatever reason because you didn't want to soften up but in retrospect like look where that look at where we are now it, it was 
it was a bad time. I know it was a bad time. You know, with her boyfriend, it was just yeah. Because Tony started getting high again. Yeah. And what, like, what was, what were your first impressions about Tony? Uh, he seemed like a cool guy. Um, he looked, you know, he was all into your mom. You know, he was happy to, I guess, reconnect with your mom because that's someone she dated when she was young. So, you know, and they were both happy, you know, sitting in the living room. I remember, you know, they were sitting side by side. They were joking. Um, you could see the smile on their face. Um, so then I talked to Anthony and Anthony's like, yeah, I, I'll stay in Jonathan's house or whatever. Like, I just don't want to be there. Like, I can't be there. I can't be there where she has this guy getting and this fucked is still up. Catalpa. No, or this was already out of town. So the, the ship from Catalpa carried over. Carried over. Yes, carried over. And that's why Anthony was so upset. And that's why Anthony eventually was like, I'm out of here. My mom bought a house in Allentown, which was really far away, like 40 minutes south of Perth Amboy. And I was just like, why so far? She's like, I need to get away. I need to get away. Sure enough, she bought the house and it just, it became a lot because of they did her dirty with mortgage. And so it was, again, back to the financial trouble, back to the money problems. It's just like, what the fuck? Is that Anthony? No. Oh. I don't think so. It would have been some shit. Oh, it is. Anthony, why you, why you never told me about all this shit about Tony and shit on Catalpa? I, I mean, I love you, but... Hi. Happy Hi. New Year. Hi. Happy New Year. Uh, because I thought you knew. I thought that was something that... I know. I'm telling him. I'm like, why these boys don't tell you these things? I don't, because... I like why story. don't you tell me these things? I don't tell nobody. Do you guys... I know, but do you guys feel like... You had to cover for her? For what? I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out myself. Because you was, guys never, like, I was over here told me her anything. Day. Yeah. Like, you guys would, you know, you you know, you would vent to me or whatever. But that's, like, far, few, and in between. You guys been through hell. It's only, uh, I mean, it's stupid. Like, like stupid she, in the sense that you don't understand what she's doing with it. Not even, because uh, what are you guys talking, what are you talking about? I was unaware of the severity of the shit that went down. Like what? Like Isaiah being left in the cold, about uh, Tony staying with her in the motel uh, between houses, uh, about uh, Tony uh, being part of the accident. I didn't know. Uh, I don't know that about he, that. You don't, you know, don't know about any? Okay, I'm done. I'm calling my mother. In from the car. I'm done. Hello? Uh, yeah, I'm here. <sighs> okay. And, and, and like I said, it's a work in progress. Like, I would remember if I did something wrong and I would talk about it. But if I told you every last single incident that has happened in my life, you would have a 20-hour movie. But it's a... So I'm okay, telling you, I'm not diminishing... So I, I, I understand that. I'm not diminishing your part of it. But also understand that it, the same goes for me, for me in particular. And, 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 and Anthony, exactly. so if I were to sit here yeah. and detail every single time that I was hurt or abused or uh, uh, or uh, disappointed, like it, I would, it would be overwhelming. But that's not the point no. of it. The point is, no, you know, the point of it is to focus on. Um, there's a problem. Let me fix it. Again, pieces of the puzzle. You know what I'm saying? Puzzle, exactly. No, no, I understand. But it, in a way, she made it seem like I treated Isaiah bad too. And I haven't. Okay, yeah, so can I ask you a question, great. though? Can I ask you a question, though? Go ahead. How do you know how she made it seem if I was the one who interviewed her? Yeah, because you were really upset, Alex, and that's all I need to see. You was really, really upset, and and, and that speaks volumes. Be it speaks... Do you understand yeah, what I'm saying? Of, of course, but like I told you, like, I was caught off guard with the information, and again, she wasn't trying to make you look bad. You know what I'm I saying? Know, I understand. She... I understand. I, I'm just now. I'm like, what the fuck? You know. I get. I get why you're upset, right? I get why you're upset. You're focusing on the on the little, not the little things, but the the, the little the... things. Yeah, no, the little things. Yeah, because it, but even the little things count. You understand? Especially, especially because of everything that I've been through, and I've been trying to do everything right. Yeah, I'm. I'm. You know, I'm hard on my kids. 
I'm Ma, but you have, but you have to understand that in the process of you trying to do everything right, you did some shit that wasn't right. I know. Nothing in life is easy, including change. You understand? I accept full responsibility. You know, even through my struggles, trying to stay clean. I'm, you know, it, it's just. I, I, I got a lot going through my mind. Let me clear my head. And I promise I'll call you. I just wanted to make sure that you got home. I've been clean for 24 years, and all I date is dolphins. Bottom line, listen. My two kids, my two younger kids' father, dolphin. Love the shit out of him. Tony, you know, he's not a dope. Well, he was a dolphin. He's been clean. But this is the Tony, type do you want to talk about that? These are the type Can of... You Have you discussed that with him? Yeah, he knows that. He knows that. Why? Why I fight so much? Why? <laughs> do you, you... And this is whatever, but you know, in my mom's story, she's talking about how... Did you hear what she said? I am. No. About that, like you know how she how you get but, high. No, how wait, wait. This, this is what I want to be respectful about it too. Exactly. Because that's private. Exactly. So like, do you want to talk about it or no? Well, that dip in that. Yes. But that like, gonna throw me in a bus like that. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> but you dip in that on what? What? Were you dipping that on what? Heroin. I used to dip in that. You used to or still? Yeah, I stopped. How long? Shit, like what? Three months ago. Yeah. Wait, wait. But you've been clean three months, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, on a straight side? Yeah, yeah, straight. Yeah, without using nothing at all, just, you know, occasionally drinking. Uh, what, 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 like, okay, your drug of choice? Yeah, my drug of choice was heroin. And what drives you, like, because, so three months is, is that's something to be very proud of, proud of, but it also is, like, a shorter period of time. So, it's, you know, it's recent. So, like, what drives you to go there? Like, What drives me to go there is, is like, you know, mala mania, but... Then again, you know, it, it is a, a drug that if you're not really strong mentally, it'll take hold of you and it'll fuck you up. So you, because they say when you do heroin, it's like, it's, it's almost like no turning back. Like, it's hard to stop. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so like what, I said, if, you, you if you're really weak-minded, like, like if you don't have that, uh, it's like me, like, Josie likes to say a lot of times that I'm weak. But I'm not weak, I'm a strong individual, you know what I mean? Like, I know my limits, you know what I'm saying? I know when to stop. You know, that's why, like, you got people that got habits where they wake up in the morning, they really, you know, need it. But they're afraid to, like, break the, you know, break the cycle, break the habit because they, they're just not strong enough, you know, mentally and physically. You know what I'm saying? Because it is a physical addiction as well as mentally. You know what I mean? But see, like... What, it, like so do, do, you, do you think at this point right now, like, right now, do you think you, you go back to... Well, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> with your mom, I doubt it. Because she's always on my ass, and I can't, like, you know, those times where I try to play it off like I'm not, but, you know, you can't pull the wool over her eyes because she knows. She's been there. She's done that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And and it's like like I always say, you can't dolphin a dolphin. You can't hustle a hustler. Yeah. You can't con a con. So you moved back out here in 2014? Yeah. And you, that's when you got with my mom, or how did that happen? Well, like, how did y'all reconnect? I, I met your mom back in, like, 80, 81. Like I said, she was innocent. She was a real good, she was a real good girl. Una niñita, you know what I mean? When Tony came into the picture, I had distanced myself from my mom and whatever drama followed her because I was in a good place in my life. I didn't want anything or anyone to bring me down, you know? And um, I, I just, I didn't want all that work that I had done on myself to be for nothing. So when I met him, I didn't think that I, I don't think I gave him a fair chance, you know? I tried a little for my mom's sake, but there just wasn't much effort on my part. And on top of that, like, I'm not sure how soon after he moved out here, but I heard that he was doing drugs again and I was definitely not taking part of any of that. You know, like, I, that's when I was done. I was just like, I'm done. My mom and your relationship came up in her inter initial interview, so, you know? What did she say in the interview about well, our relationship? Well, she, um, cause she had said that she like, Went through, went through like a mental breakdown a few weeks ago? It's just a little bit of everything. This pandemic, the lockdown, I can't go out looking for a job. 
you know, I got my mom who has dementia and her actions, you can't get mad at what she does, but it stresses you out and I hold everything in and I'll, you know, I'll go to my room and, you know, I was thinking of suicide in the whole nine. Like, I called the mental hot line. Can I ask you something? Yeah. Because you and Tony lived together, like, you felt like you couldn't, he wasn't, you couldn't talk to him? No. Because in my mind, he's only been clean, what, three months? I've been clean 24 years. He can't do nothing for me. He can't do nothing for me. I, I can't depend on somebody that's fucking up or has fucked up recently. You understand? Like, I need professional help. I don't need an excuse the way I'm gonna say this, but I don't need a junkie telling me what to do. Seriously. Seriously. That's how I feel. Everybody but feels different. You, you love him, though. I do. And... I do. Mm -hmm. But in six years, he's taken breaks and fell right back in. Taken breaks and fell back in. Take, I can't. But what about all the people that stood by your side? You know what I'm saying? I didn't let them down. I'm going on 24 years. Yeah, crazy. but it was a it was a long it was it wasn't no six years. It was a long period of time that yeah. you kept on falling. But wait, wait. And I'm not and I'm not telling you you know no, where no. I go. I'm not. I think the misunderstanding. Yeah, I had support once I came home from Clinton and I was clean. While I was getting high, I was the black black sheep. So I didn't know that he came from California to be with you. Yeah. The pandemic and this whole process has forced us, all of us really, to have conversations that we necessarily wouldn't have had in the past or otherwise. And I'm grateful for that, especially because I've had the opportunity to get to know Tony better, you know? Um, I honestly feel like I understand him a little more. Do I know him 100%? No. Um, and do I agree with his behavior sometimes? No. But, you know, he's human. My mom's human. And I think they're doing the best that they can with the cards that they're dealt. And I know that my mom relies on him f for help with the bills and with the rent and all that and also for help with my grandmother it's not easy being a caretaker and uh it's tough and she helped he helped her a lot in that regard so i mean i choose to focus on the positive and just kind of keep it going keep it moving forward and as long as they're okay for the most part again i'm good you know i can't do this you know what i'm saying because i like having money you know i like making sure she has what she needs you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I've been over backwards for her, man. That's one you know thing what I'm saying? I could, I could say. This kid that I that like to so say is mine, you know what I'm saying? I, I do whatever the fuck he, it takes for him, you know what I'm saying? I and that's okay because you're the one that's here. Yeah, yeah no, that's let me okay. tell you. As far as his character, his, his, his way of, you know, providing, he's an excellent, when I tell you he's an excellent provider, his downfall is la mala maña de meterse yeah. droga. I, you know, I, I feel like, like I was, I don't know, I like, like the, like he was put here for me to help or help, you know. And how is it that you help him? Being as rough as I am with that, because but then you're not scared you're gonna lose him. Uh, no, because if he chooses drugs over me, then he never loved me. A part of me wishes <laughs> I had the emotional stability to have told more of like everyone's story, you know, that I could have highlighted more of everyone's experience. But another part of me believes that this is the beginning of something. Uh, what that something is, I'm not sure, but you know, who knows what tomorrow will bring. Um, but again, I'm grateful. I'm always grateful. And especially because I've also connected a little more with everyone that participated in who I sat down with you know even the ones that I really didn't expect to speak on camera but that just goes to show you that we care deeply about each other and our family and when push comes to shove we're 
you know, we're here. Did you know if my uncle Jose and my grandmother were living with her at, at that time? No, Jose was living with your grandmother in, in Forbes. Forbes. I wish he was talking to me, but I know he's not. No, he ain't. He ain't. Cause I, I, I also thought that you wouldn't speak. I don't, I th but I thought but that the other wouldn't that? speak. I don't know because I think that, like, in a sense, you guys are private. Well, we're private with all these bochincheros and per yeah, damn boy. Yeah, but I, I mean, you're my that. nephew. I've spoken to you openly. Yeah. You know, we speak. So you move. So you moved in with grandma because she, it, it, somebody needed to move in with her. She yeah. Okay. I moved in with grandma when she couldn't take care of herself. I stopped everything, work, everything. So can I ask you? And again, we don't have to talk about it. But like, was wasn't that stressful for you though? Not at all. Like we thought that like, cause okay, I don't know. This is honor. We don't have to. I don't have to put it in. But like, you started. Uh, you. you Kind of do, going through your own thing, right? Yeah. It, but we I went through my own little tribulations. And we thought that was because of Grant, like you. Cause Absolutely you said, not. That was me. That's, I, that's what we thought. Well, when I had this accident, you see my fingers yes. chopped off. They put me on Percocet. Okay. I got addicted to Percocet, gotcha. and then the doctor just one day said, "Well, I can't give you any more Percocet." Gotcha. And by that time, I was addicted. Gotcha. So. But then that's the way it is with a lot of the... With heroin and everything else. Yeah. It, Percocet is just a legal form of heroin. I've learned a lot in the past few months. Like, I've always tried to be the type of person that would keep an open mind and an open heart. Like, I've always, since becoming an adult, I've always tried to kind of be that guy. But this process has really tested my limits and tested me. And if I could offer any advice to anyone who wants to hear it, I would just say, please keep an open mind and an open heart, especially if you care about the people in your life, you know? Listen, even though, like I thought I knew, but I didn't, you know? Even though you think you know what someone else is going through, you really don't. Even if you've walked like similar paths or whatever, you don't really know unless you sit down and have these tough conversations, you know? Everyone goes through things and deals with things differently. Everyone's emotions are different. Everyone's sensitivities, everyone's triggers are very different, even if like their actions say otherwise. And part of the problem, at least in my opinion, is that, and in my experience, is that we're conditioned to judge. You know, think about it. From the time that we start walking and talking, we're told to be careful, you know, if you see this type of person or be careful if you're in this neighborhood or be careful if someone looks like this or acts like this or looks different. You know, it's like drilled in us so much as we're growing up that we don't even realize we do it as adults. But I think if we were more compassionate and we led with love, it would truly make the world a better place. As cheesy as that sounds, I cringe even saying it, but it's true. Is, is there anything about your experience at all, you know, mm -hmm. that you want to say? Like anything, like anything about anything, you know, like mm -hmm. you want to say? Yeah, my, um, um, you know, my experience and, and I know this now, I know this now, like, um, I'm 51, man, and it took me 51 years to really realize this, or to get this, and I still ain't got it, but, um, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta enjoy life, man, for whatever it's worth, you know? So, you know, it, it's never late, it's never late in life for anything, and that's why I'm so fucking happy for Joe's. And now I'm happy for your father. I just found out that he's been through me for like 12 yeah. years. So I'm happy for him because that gives you a chance. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To know your roots. Yeah. But, um, cut that off. <laughs> uh, let's see, I'll tell you, my um, only regrets is probably not being a good dad or a great dad. You know what I'm saying? And, a better son, grandson, even though you couldn't tell my grandma I wasn't, but I just wish I could have been that. I'm three things. A better son, a better dad, a better grandson. But um, these lad, if I could get 45 more years, because them 45 that I that I went through and you know, it was tough, man. I like I didn't know, I didn't know. I just knew how to run the streets. That's it. Would you say that I'm a lot like my mother? Yeah. <laughs> in what? In, yes, yeah. In, 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 a lot, in a lot of ways. In a lot of ways, I'm like my mom? Yes, yes. Spiritually, attitude, um, 
the craziness that comes out of you guys sometimes. Words matter. No, yeah. Words matter. And I learned that. Because I'm you I am my mother's son. Yeah. I am a lot like you. I know. And it's like I have to, I have to sometimes really like take a step back because I know that I, I we could be deadly with our words. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, go. We could be deadly with our words. Exactly. So I just I just you have to be you have to in life in general you have to be mindful of, of your of words. What I said. What else? Anything else you wanna? Yeah, at the beginning when we started shooting, I you asked me a question that why did I want to do this, mm -hmm. and I kind of like, you know, I couldn't find the words, but I just want I, I'm doing it because I'm a news girl. I watch the news 24/7. Like I can tell you what happened three days ago, because I'm so into the news. I want I, I am doing this documentary because I, like I said, I watch the news and I've seen uh, the addiction that's going on in the world today, especially today with this pandemic and and everything, every personal problem that each addict has, you know? And I think that my words, will, my actions and my life will change somebody. And if I can change, ooh, if I can change one person, then I'm doing my damn job. But that's the thing though, like I feel like, you know, with you, Mom and Theo, right, that, that, this is why I, I appreciate your time and your effort because, you know, I feel like you three collectively and even individually, like, could really impact someone, even if it's just one person, like, your testimony, your story, you know, like, I feel like it could really make a difference, you know what I'm saying? Even if it's just one person, even if it's just me, even if this at the end of the day is just changing me as me as me as me. If you could describe my mom in three words, what, what were any words, what would you say? Well, how would you describe her? Courageous. Courageous. And I tell her there are times that I say things and I call her, I'm like, I just said something that you said, so it rubbed off on me. Um, she's an inspiration, you know? Um, she, she's been through a lot. She's still standing. She's still gonna go through a lot. I'm so happy for her. Do you know what that is? Like, to be who she was, to even accomplish on buying a house. It's very hard for people to do that. It's very hard to get where she went, where she got. Josie's been a real good friend of mine. Um, I can confide in her. I know she can confide in me at any time. Um, glad that she's back here. Um, you know, and she has her family. And I thank you as the oldest child taking this time and doing a documentary of your mom, which that means a lot. Yeah. Because I, I want people, like, thank you, first of all. I, yeah, I, I kind of like, I, if, when, when I judge my mom hard. I'm really rough on my mom really rough like i'll be the first one to be like you're trash for whatever reason you know my personal experience or whatever but i f it's one thing to to think someone's changed but i felt a change um you know for me it's a learning uh, i guess learning lesson about your family and the relationship with your mother um because it puts it puts um a lot of pieces in the past seven and a half years that we've been together you know your emotions your roller coaster with the family so it this helps, you know, helps me understand you, understand your family better as well. In my own, in my own personal experience, uh, my life got better when I stopped playing the victim. You know, my life got better when I wanted to do better, when I wanted to be better, when I wanted to live my best, most authentic life. That's when things started shifting for me and changing. Despite everything we've all been through, my family is the only thing I, I care about. You know, my daughter, and my family, no matter what. I could be mad at Josie, you know, call her all kinds of names in my head or out loud, but I love her. When it, at the end of the day, I love her. Kato, at the end of the day, I love him. Same. My nephews, you, Isaiah, Anthony, nothing but love. You're the, you're the three boys I didn't have. I'm the only one with girls. I hope that my family and friends or whatever can use this documentary as a stepping stone, especially my family, you know, I I, w I hope that we can use this as the beginning of healing for all of us.
And if not, well, at least I tried. And I'm a firm believer that yes, we are bruised, all of us in one way or another, but we are not broken. She was a trip, man. She was definitely a trip. Everybody, you know, that knew her, like, you know, she was just, she was good people's man. She was just like, just caught up in the, in the, in the, in the, in the in that, that lifestyle. Yeah. You know, that lifestyle had her all discombobulated. And she, um, yeah, it was her turn. It was her time to go. Feel so out of place, feel so, feel so out of place right now. 